Hi, my name is Jeremy Shines, and welcome to Bread of Life. So I woke up today, and this is what the Lord spoke to me about. He says, give me a second. It's, it's, I'm trying to make it sound really short because it was, but it was just hard to kind of, all right. He says, what you believe is what you read and what you see and what you hear. What you believe is what you read, what you see and what you read. Let me say that again. What you believe is what you read, what you see, and what you hear. Now, let me break it down. What you read is what you pay attention to. What you see is what you focus on. And what you hear, meaning what you understand, that is your reality. You live in this cosmos of infinite intelligence, of knowledge and wisdom. And your life is based on what you place your attention on. Now, for those of you who are looking for truth, I say read your Bible. Read your Bible. Because your life is a reflection of what you focus on and what you read, what you watch, and what you hear. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. From the Old Testament writings since Moses until Paul and then John who wrote Revelation. It's been an ongoing battle with darkness versus light. Learning what's good from learning what's bad. Being a creator who's dwelling in eternal light to the darkness that he spoke it into that is confusing and has no life and is death. You see, it gets bigger than just our humanity. It's the very nature of God and his creation. God is light and he spoke over darkness with the word, with the word of his mouth. He breathed life. He breathed light. He being a spirit or he being a person like you and me. Light versus darkness. That's what we live in. And since Moses, he wrote a lot of the old books, which is all the laws. Do and do not. Right? Right? until the last apostles who finished the writings, the canon writings of the Old Testament and considering the New Testament as well. There were so many different books. But what makes these, what makes this book so important? The Holy Bible. It's been translated multiple times. It's the number one bestseller every year. When houses burn down, it never gets scorched. What makes this Bible so important? People try to add on to it. They try to take out of it. There are a group, many groups of people who are still trying to discredit the Bible. There's movies made about it. Thousands of movies. One of them is the book of Eli which is the Bible. He's protecting and preserving the Bible when they're living in the apocalypse of just the aftermath. 
of an apocalypse and they're looking for water living water and the spirit is guiding him and these guys are just coming after him and one of the themes is the end of the world happened because of the bible i mean we see it today we see they're taking the bible out of the school systems now they're trying to take out of the take the bible out of the government why it's just a book right it's not like it's just could be any other book with writings on it you know other religions have their own they have the bible but they've also added on to the bible the Jewish tradition, Jewish people, they, they don't even have the New Testament, which is when Jesus comes. They don't even believe that the Messiah already came. So this, if this just being a book, <clears throat> then why do so many people hate it? I used to work at a school district. I was just reading a book. Could have been reading any other book, but I just read this book. And they fired me. It's just a book, though. Right? Why the why if it's just a book, why are you trying to prohibit it from being in the government, from being in the school systems? Why is it so illegal to read? Even in public. It's just a book. Right? You could read any other book. Shakespeare, no one says anything. No one says anything when I read Fifty Shades of Grey in a kindergarten class no one says anything i tell you not i was over at the school district and they were listening to tupac near the principal's office no one says anything but i got fired for reading the bible wow interesting right the moment that the bible is looked at you know I, you go to church now and they don't really read the bible anymore they don't really focus on the bible anymore they add on these other teachings what the heck is going on you know i said an analogy about going to burger king to get a burger or pizza hut to get a pizza i go to the church to get the word of god the bible now i'm getting all these other teachings What's happening to our world? Your reality is based on what you read, what you pay attention to by what you see and what you hear. And Jesus says, if you love me, you keep my word. <clears throat> so what, what do we have to learn from this? If you want your world to change, read the Bible. If you want to change, read the Bible. Jesus came, yes. Old Testament writings, all talking about Jesus and the one who was going to set us free. The word made itself flesh. We had a piece of the puzzle in the Old Testament, but we need the fulfillment of that puzzle, which was Jesus. That's the full picture. Here's all the laws none of us could live by, Right? Those things separate what's good from bad. We're all on the outside in darkness, which is bad. Here comes the finished product of that puzzle, which is Jesus. They per per perfectly fit together, full of grace, love, holiness and goodness and truth. The Old Testament, whom now we can now we have a way into God's kingdom. But he said this to me, he said, so he said this to me, he said, what you believe is what you read, and that is where your faith is. The only person who can stand and be in a brothel or be in the midst of an orgy for eternity and not sin is Jesus. A bunch of people having sex. He can look at a whole situation and just be like, never sin. Me and you can't do that. We can't be in a situation like that and not sin because we're sinners. We're saved by grace. We're going to sin. You can't watch porn and, you know, look at that and say, I'm not lusting. You're just going to lust. That's just our nature. You can't read other books and not believe it because those seeds get sown inside of you. Through your eyes, through your ears, through your reading. 
you will be deceived. And that's why he says, do not be cautious of the Pharisees and the Sadducees of this day. They stray away from the Bible into these myths about we have to do all this extra stuff. It's the Bible that administers grace to the heart. The word of God isn't just a bunch of words that you read. No matter how many times I read the Bible, I get something new from it. And I sense that there's something more going on that is a divine nature that I don't even understand. It's not just I'm reading, you know, let's just say I walk through the valley of shadow of death. It's not just the words. It's there's something inside the words. He says, my word is sharper than any double edged sword. This is this is this is a holy book. This is divine intervention. It's God's understanding. We can't understand it no matter how many times we read it. But it, there's something happening to us. We don't even understand how much dirt is on this earth. How could we fully understand this? But we try, we try. And that's why we walk by faith when we read this. You know, when we look at the reality that we live in, we're like sheep. We're strayed by everything that we see and that we hear. Or we can't think properly. We need a shepherd to guide us. A shepherd who came here to give us his word. But it's by faith that we read this. When you open your Bible, you're doing it by faith. When you read it and you live by it day by day, when you apply it, you're doing it by faith that this is the truth and this is the way and this is the life of of where Jesus laid his foundation. But who's going to hold it forever? I went to school and there was something wrong. Every time I even tried not reading my Bible for a few days, it was the most terrible two days I've ever had before I even be other than when I before I became a Christian. I've even tried to read other books and I've always felt like I was lacking more reading and I needed to read more books and I needed to read more books and I became a Pharisee. I became so like everyone needs to read books and I condemned people for not reading books. But when I read this, it just satisfies me. I can never get in. I can get enough. I can get enough. I feel so just at peace. Like, wow, my mind's at peace. And I see people and I love and I just like, wow, grace, grace. I don't understand it completely. I just know that how it makes me feel, how it makes me, you know, see the world. It's just a book though, right? I don't, I don't know. Is it? That's for you to decide. So my encouragement is to read your Bible. And I'm going to keep saying it through every video or sermon that I say. Read your Bible. False teachers, man. Don't read that. Don't follow them. You follow them when you focus on them, when you look into what they're doing, when you read and listen to what they're saying. Those are deceptive spirits here to lead you away from the Bible. I start reading the Bible. Suddenly everyone starts criticizing me. Why are you reading the Bible? Oh, the Bible. Oh, the Bible. It's just a book, right? Why is this book tossed aside? I don't know. It's just like, is this just a book? Is this just a book? Let me read this. I'm reading these words. I'm like, hmm. I don't know. I don't know. That's for you to decide. I've already decided, and I'm never going to stop reading this. Man, I went to school, and it was like, God was like, I was like, man, I felt like I wasted my time. And he was just like, no, you didn't. And I was just like, but I did. He's like, I did learn some interesting things. Don't get me wrong. <clears throat> He's like, I felt like he was like, now you know to keep my word. My word is enough. Now you know. And I was like, dang. And I get tempted by reading other books. And I'm like, not every other book is bad, but for the most part, we're, dece we're deceived easily. It's not that it's bad or evil. I mean, I still watch movies and stuff. 
but it's just like I hold on to this really tightly really tightly I mean I kind of look at another book like man what could you really teach me that this this couldn't teach me why would I want to spend time with this that could be flawed this knowledge over here could be flawed whereas this is not flawed written by 40 different authors over a period of 1500 years they don't contradict each other the bible doesn't contradict itself at all i i i still look through it and then i go wow before i thought it did and i'm like no snap i didn't see that then i realize i'm reading it with an imperfection understanding with imperfection thoughts i'm a sinner reading this holy god word how could i understand this And it's just, it's just an amazing book for me anyways. How much value do you have on your Bible? Is it just on your shelf? What about you ministers? Is it just something that you kind of use once in a while? It's like, ah, Bible. Or is it just like, you're on it and you're like. Everyone has their own theology, their own way of thinking. But Jesus says you have to lose your way of thinking. You have to lose this world. You have to die to this world and inherit a new way of thinking. This has the final authority over everything. Everything. Everything right here. Final authority right here. Not this other book or philosophy or understanding. Right here. This is the final rule of authority. It's God's word. We shouldn't even be debating over it. The fact that we are shows that one of us is in the wrong. Do you believe in the same God I do? Because if you did, you wouldn't have anything negative to say. You wouldn't contradict the Bible. We would look at the same verse and say, amen. We agree. But the fact that we don't means that we're worshiping two different gods. What do you believe about this person over here? What do you know about them? Well, I believe this. Another person says that I believe that. Another person says I believe this. Four gospels. They all saw Jesus in a different perspective. But we shouldn't contradict each other if we see in the same Jesus. We shouldn't treat each other any differently if we're being administered to the same spirit, to the same faith, and the same baptism. But the fact that we are shows that something's wrong with our theology. Where do you get your theology? Do you get it from all these other books? Because this is where I get my theology, right here. Right here, boom, that's my theology. This nation was founded off of right here. Something's not right. Light can't mix with darkness. Unless two people agree, they cannot walk together side by side in life. So all I should hear in church is amen. Amen. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. But I don't hear that. You don't really get that anymore. At least the churches I've been to. I'm not saying all the churches, I'm just saying some of them. I'm like, I don't get the amen, man. I get the arguing, bickering about words and synonyms and what the Greek meaning and all this stuff is. I'm just like, why are we even arguing about that? Jesus already finished that. Right here. Something's wrong with our theology and our thinking. Satan likes to sow in darkness. He likes to trade in truth for lies and lies for truth. What God says is good. Satan says it's bad. What God says is bad, Satan says it's good. We don't see the world the same because we don't read the same material. Or we look at this material and try to make it into the material of this world instead of looking at this material for what it is. There's no darkness in God. It doesn't contradict itself. The word is sharper than any double-edged sword. Where are you getting your material from? As Jesus said, the Spirit is the Word of God. He you know, keeps my words and obeys them. They love me. So ain't nothing wrong with my theology if I'm just reading this. This is all I'm reading. For the Spirit will teach you all things. This is what I'm reading right here. This is my foundation. This is what Jesus came to do. He came to establish His church. Well, how is He going to establish His church unless I talk to Him first one-on-one? -on -one? This is what I got my testament from where are you getting your testament from you get along with all the people that 
that, that, that read the books that you read, but you don't get along with me? What are you reading? I don't read those books. I don't look into those things. This is where I look for all my information. This is where I get my perspective from. And everyone who gets their perspective from me, which I've met, they say amen. And I say amen. We agree. This is the holy word of God. But then there are some Christians that say, oh, well, you misinterpreting the Bible. I'm just like, <laughs> that's all I read is the Bible. How am I misinterpreting the Bible? You need help from outside sources. Are you serious? Are you serious? So, so the Holy Spirit doesn't live in me. The Holy Spirit isn't teaching me about the word of God. Those seeds aren't coming into my mind and coming into my heart. Huh. And I need your outside material to teach me about who God is. I don't want to get too far more into that, but you get what I'm saying. That's what's happening in this world. People are falling away from the Bible. And they're falling and following deceptive spirits. Teachings over wisdom that's puffed up. Paul says it's puffed up. Knowledge is puffed up. <clears throat> Looking for more. If it ain't in here, I don't know what else to tell you. If you don't believe it's not just in here, that you're never going to fully get it. I don't know what to tell you. Sorry. <laughs> that's what I try to do. I know that because I'm speaking from personal experience. I wanted off reading every book that I could see. Oh, it's a book. I got to read it. Oh, snap. Whoa. Trash. Read this other book. Trash. I read this. Whoa. <laughs> Dang makes me feel good it makes me smile it makes me just whoa this is god's word it's getting really cold out here even though the sun's blazing in my face read your freaking bible man that's all i gotta say man this is whole sermon is about read your bible dude <clears throat> in these churches man just read your bible that's it Read your Bible. Y'all trying to understand the Trinity. Y'all trying to understand. Y'all just trying to one-up each other. That's it. That's all just fitting for your pride. All that knowledge that you read is all just for your pride. That's all it is. Jesus came to make peace with his blood and the word. He says, First mm, John, not First John, but John, the last gospel, at least in that order, <laughs> and, uh, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Where do you find Jesus? 